Uh, so today I wanted to talk to you about Ian. Um, so he is five years old now. Sorry, my, my dogs. Um, he is five years old now and he is in kindergarten. And uh, let's see, we moved to Japan about eight months ago and we noticed a change in him and that is that he started to stutter uh, pretty bad. <laughs> um, he was stuttering a little bit when we were still in California when he was in preschool but it was very mild and in fact I don't even think I noticed that he was doing it or maybe I just assumed you know that's just how little kids talk so it didn't even register on our radar uh, that he was starting to stutter a little bit in California um, it was kind of just like, M Mommy, can I have a juice? Or you'd say, what do you want to play, Ian? And he'd go, um, I, I want to play Monopoly or, you know, not Monopoly, but <laughs> um, just like he would just stutter that first word in a sentence, but the rest of the sentence would come out pretty clearly. And so I didn't, it didn't even register as stuttering to me. I was just like, you know, he's and he's trying to say a million words a minute and that's just how little kids are, right? Um, so it didn't get any worse in while we were in California. That's just how it was. That's how he talked and, you know, whatever. Then we moved to Japan and immediately we noticed that he started stuttering, like, overnight almost so badly. And it was just like, ma, 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 mommy, can I... Can I go, 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 go with you? And we were like, wow, man, like, it just, it didn't, like, progress slowly. It was like we moved, and then, bam, he started stuttering really badly. Um, so we did notice it. Uh, so we started doing things like telling him, hey, buddy, just slow down, think about what you want to say, and then try again. And when we would do that, you know, he would. He would stop, think about it, and then he'd say it, and it would come out clear. So we were like, okay, you know, he's just trying to talk so fast um, that, you know, his brain's moving faster than his mouth can. Not a big deal. Um, but it just kept getting worse over the months that we have lived here. And um, then I started looking online at stuttering and, you know, was this normal five-year-old kind of language development or was this a problem? Is Does he... Blah, blah, blah. Is he developing a stutter? Well, something that I kept seeing consistently over all of the websites that I was checking out was it said don't like make a big deal out of them stuttering. Don't say slow down. Don't say start over. Like don't say any of those things because you're just drawing attention to the stutter and it actually could prolong it or make it worse. So Neil and I were like, oh poop, <laughs> you know, because we had been doing that for months, telling him slow down, take a breath, try again. So we stopped doing that. When he started kindergarten, we stopped doing that. He's been in kindergarten since September, and it is October now. So he's been in kindergarten for about two months now, and we haven't been you know, telling him to slow down or try again or any of that. Well, then recently, I don't know how many of you have been following us for a long time, but uh, we had two dogs. One... I've had since I began making YouTube videos seven years ago and his name was Riley and he was featured in a lot of my earlier videos. Um, I'll link some down below if you just want to see how cute he is and oh uh, well he passed away last week. Uh, it was Tuesday and this is the first time that Ian has had to deal with death and so, you know, we had a, a full day of saying goodbye. We got Riley a bacon burger for dinner, his last meal, and he ate it as best he could. Uh, but even that, he was having trouble. But So Ian had to kind of see that. And I didn't realize that it hit him so hard. He seemed okay, you know, during the day. You know, while, as we were saying goodbye, we were talking about the fact that Riley was going to be going to heaven. And Ian really seemed like he was grasping it and that, you know, he's okay with it. Uh, once we got to the vet, we did one last goodbye and then Neil took Ian out and then I was the one to hold Riley as he passed away. And when I came out and we were heading back to the car, Ian seemed really confused about where Riley was, even though had, we had talked about, you know, that Riley wasn't going to come back with us. He was going to heaven. 
Um, but maybe he just didn't understand it as well as I thought because he was very confused when I didn't walk out with Riley. And um, so I'm trying not to get emotional. It's it's only been like a week, like I said. Um, but yeah, so that it was at that moment where he was like, is Riley dead? Like it completely just went over his head, even though we had said, you know, Riley's body is going to be buried and his soul is going to go to heaven. I guess I just didn't use the word dead or died. And that's the word he needed, I guess, because, you know, he asked and I was like, yes, Riley is dead. And he broke down in that parking lot. He refused to leave the vet. He didn't want to get in the car. He's very, very upset. Um, eventually he calmed down. We got him in the car. We went home. But after that, this past week, we have noticed his stuttering has gotten so much worse, so much worse. And we had the speech therapist before Riley passed away. We had a speech therapist at his school come evaluate him. And she said that he was in the normal range. I mean, out of a six points being you're fine, he was at a five, which is passing. So she didn't like see a lot uh, of his stuttering while she was evaluating him. She said he did, you know, had a little disfluency on certain words, repeating certain sounds at the beginning. But outside of that, she said it was very normal for his age. But what I was seeing at home was very different. Um, it was a lot of stuttering. And then especially after Riley passed, that's when we noticed that he started breathing really heavily when he would talk. He'd be like, mom, ma, ma. Mom, can I? Like he was like frustrated with himself. I also noticed that he kept grabbing my clothes when he would be talking. He would grab my ponytails, and he was like, 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 don't leave. Just let me finish this sentence. I'm trying to get it out, please. And I never rushed him, but he was so frustrated. He was doing his hands. A couple times he just stopped and got really upset and he threw himself on his bed or the couch or whatever and he's like, I can't talk. I can't. I can't say it. Um, I was able to get some of this on a video and I was able to show the speech therapist and she was like, wow, you know, no, he didn't do any of that while I was evaluating him. So I'm so glad that you have this video because if this is what I had seen, you know, I would have been concerned and we would have, you know, moved forward with speech therapy. But he was speaking pretty you know normal for a five-year-old so she's like I just was gonna check on him in another four to six months and see if it had cleared up but I was so happy that I I brought it back because when I got that letter like that he was fine I mean a part of me was very relieved that okay she said this is normal but you know but then Riley passed and it just was worse and I was like this is not normal I have to say something um so yeah, I'm really glad that I did because now we're working together. She said that he's going to have a meeting with the school counselor to talk about, you know, the move to Japan. It was a big change. He had never moved before, really. So this is his first big move and it was international. He left all of his friends, anybody he knows outside of Neil and I. He left his school, his friends. Um, you know, we were living in a hotel for a little bit when we first moved here. Um, and then immediately he was starting kindergarten and then his dog passed away. He just lost a tooth. Um, yeah, there's a lot going on, a lot of change. And she said, you know, it just might be stress. Uh, we did also notice that he stutters more in the evening rather than in the morning. So she's like, um, a lot of times stuttering has to do with tiredness. So she's like, you know, the fact that he's tired at the end of the night explains why he is more prone to have discipline disfluency at night as well as you know all of these big changes in his life and stress so he's gonna go talk to the counselor at his school and then also he's going to be working with the school speech therapist as well as another lady that works there that I guess used to work at like a children's studying a children's stuttering clinic I guess or something like that which is really cool um so he's gonna have a lot of people on his team working with him and I'm I'm excited that we are getting this early on because right now he is in kindergarten and kids are a lot nicer in kindergarten. I just didn't want this to progress and follow him into middle and high school where kids are not as kind and I just didn't want that affecting his self-esteem. Uh, his teacher said she did notice that he doesn't volunteer very much in class and she also was noticing the stutter and things and she's like, I really think that maybe he's not volunteering because 
he recognizes that he's speaking different or that he has trouble talking and maybe he doesn't want to do it in front of a lot of people. But she did notice when he was in smaller groups with people, with kids that he's comfortable with that are his friends or one-on-one -on -one with her, he knows the material. He knows the answers. Um, he's doing fabulous in school. So it's not affecting him academically yet. And we don't want it to, which is why we are trying to, you know, work on this now. So I'm so excited that you know, I was able to get that on video and I was able to share and express concerns with his teacher and the staff at his school have just been amazing. And I'm excited that we're working on this, you know, early on and fast. So, so yeah, anyways, that's kind of just what I wanted to talk to you guys about. I don't know if any of you have uh, little kids that have a stuttering or disfluency issue and maybe this would help if, you know, you could kind of hear what my son was going through, what they you know, considered normal or what they considered something concerning that needed help. Um, but yeah, you know, if ever you think that your kid needs help, you know, you gotta be their advocate. You gotta, you gotta push sometimes. And I'm glad I did because now he is going to be getting some help with this. And uh, yeah, so if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Or if you, you know, have a child that stutters, um, let me know your story. I'm curious, when did they start stuttering? Did it go away on its own? Did they need speech therapy? Did it ever go away fully or will they always have a stutter but they just have to work on it? Like, I want to know. I'm, this is very new for me. So anyways, I hope this video was helpful in some way or, you know, just eye-opening, I guess. I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and uh, I will talk to you guys later. Bye! What my new my my old tooth under my bed under your pillow? Why are you gonna do that? I don't know. Who's coming for your tooth? Tooth fairy. Yeah, let me see it. Let me see that missing tooth in your mouth. Okay, go ahead, put it under your pillow. <laughs> it's so exciting.